Hello, welcome to our last live event with Sonia Corbett and Kendra Von Esch. Today, we're going to have a live discussion called God Forgave You, When Can You Forgive Yourself? And so we'll just start with probably 10 minutes of discussion, and then we'll open it up for Q&A as it goes forward. And I'm going to just stream this to um, Facebook in the meantime, but you can go ahead and get started. You want to start? I want to start. I'll start. Okay. I'll start because um, I'm just bold like that. <laughs> no, Sonia is too. Um, I just want to welcome everyone to this event and this online conference. This is so important, but I'd like to start if we can in a, a small little prayer. And then Sonia, I'd like to ask you to close us out. The gift of healing is something so important that we need. So I definitely want you to close us out. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit, help us love ourselves like you love us, Lord. We need your kindness, your patience, your heart. We know that if we ask you to change our hearts, then our thoughts, and our deeds, and our words will all follow suit. We know that you have brought to our eyes, you've raised in front of us what we need to work on, but we also know that you're so loving, so kind, so merciful, and we are called to forgive. Otherwise, you won't forgive us, and that means that we have to forgive ourselves. I know it's hard, and we, we ask for you to give us humility so that we can give this to you so that you can forgive for us so that you can change our hearts eventually a long time and we can truly pray and love ourselves like we are supposed to in this world in your name jesus we pray amen in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen okay hopefully i caught that on the live stream Alrighty, I know it is 7.03, so I'm sure some of you will be coming in. I just wanted to share, my name is Kendra Von Esch. I'm a former <laughs> recovering corporate executive. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing in that life, in that world. It certainly didn't give me what the liar of this world, Satan, told me would make me happy, which is money and power and prestige. And oh, by the way, don't forget to do whatever makes you happy, which is a lot of sinful behavior. My whole life for 42 years was really living the worldly life, was sucking up every pleasure I could. And with that came so much shame, so much guilt, self-hatred. I was going to reconciliation, this beautiful sacrament we have in the Catholic church. I like to call it reconciliation because I used to think about confession as a way that I could get away from the, the, from, I'm sorry, I used to think about confession as not going to hell, getting away from that path that I was on, not thinking about reconciling myself to God. So reconciliation, cilia, little hairs, like your eyelashes, we have cilia on our lungs. And I think about going into that beautiful reconciliation so that I can be eyelash to eyelash with God. So on my journey, it was very difficult. I was a confirmed Catholic who knew nothing about the faith, had no clue that Jesus was God. I had no idea why he died for us. And I had zero clue about the Eucharist and the beautiful body, blood, soul, and divinity that we can receive every single time in mass or sit in front of an adoration. So I am this person who runs away from the Catholic faith. I don't even think about God at all. As a matter of fact, for 20 years after I actually got divorced from my first husband, you can listen to my initial story. When I ended up leaving and living on my own, I wasn't even going to Christmas or Easter mass of any kind. So what I was doing was self-medicating. I was numbing myself because I didn't really want to think or feel the shame and the guilt that I felt. And you need to know that I was committing adultery with my first husband, who I married in the Catholic church. We were both Catholic. I wasn't practicing. His family was. 
And I sit there and I used to just, oh, if I look back, uh, why did I even get married? I believed what the world told me, which was, hey, if it doesn't work, get divorced. And then I was so ashamed about my life, literally meaning I thought that I had to do certain things. I had to look a certain way in order to be accepted and loved by men. And that led me to a really promiscuous lifestyle. And therefore, when God found me and <laughs> honestly pulled me out of the pits of hell, and I started learning the Catholic teachings, I realized, oh my goodness, I got to change everything. Oh my gosh, how are you going to do this? And yes, it was, how are you going to do this? I looked at myself in the mirror, call it a mirror moment. And I was like, this is never going to work. You're, you got a lot of, I couldn't even stay on a diet. How am I going to change everything about my life? Because I had all the sins going on. But God raised to my heart in probably the second year of my journey that he is the one who will help me forgive me, that I need to let myself and all of my emotions and my guilt, and my shame. And I realized that, hey, that's not God's spirit. That's evil in my life. And now I know. I didn't know what I know now back then. And I don't have that love in my heart for God and the respect for myself that I had back, that I didn't have back then. So I'm just sharing my forgiveness for myself was a long road. And I was constantly going back to confession over and over reconciliation as I'm seriously trying to change my mindset that I just want to be eyelash to eyelash with God. And so you may be out there, it may be some big thing in the past. It may be just walking the journey and trying to stay away from vice, being as holy as you possibly can, little age, and just plugging along with God. And we're going to fall and we're going to be mad at ourselves <laughs> if you're human, but we need to be kind and patient which is exactly what love is. And it's our duty. God says, if you don't forgive others, he won't forgive you. And guess what? That includes ourselves. So I'm happy to participate in any questions that you have. And I'm going to kick it over to Sonia so we can get this show on the road. I know she's got plenty to share. Well, I don't have so much to share as I thought perhaps we could... Um maybe pursue a couple of, of thoughts. So the first thought on forgiveness for me is that there's a difference between forgiveness and shame. Mm -hmm. So shame is a whole different animal than forgiving ourselves. We can forgive ourselves and still have to battle that shame for a period of time. But forgiveness, we see out of Matthew 18, that Jesus pretty much outlines for us what that entails and it's not a feeling it's not saying that things were that what we did was okay or what uh, someone else did to us was okay instead it's simply forgiveness of the debt so the debt that we owe ourselves is maybe doing better but I don't know I mean I, I grew up in the days of Oprah and I remember her saying you know when you know better you do better and when we don't know, it's, it's unfair, I think, to condemn our younger selves for, for doing things that we, we don't, we know it's wrong, right? But we, we do them out of woundedness, right? We sin out of our woundedness. So my first thought would be that shame and forgiveness for ourselves are two different things. But also what forgiveness is and what it isn't. So I'm interested in perhaps what, what you guys had to say about that. All right. So we're waiting for questions. Okay. I'm going to go on that. So shame and yes, forgiveness is letting go of the debt that somebody supposedly is that you want them to pay you because of the harm that they've done to you. And we're, so we're talking about ourselves, which is the hardest thing. So how do you let that go? I, I struggled a lot with it and I, truly had to invite Jesus into it I, because I obviously was going to confession over and over for a sin that I committed. I ended up going to my um, ex-husband because I committed adultery on him. And that did help a lot by going to that person who I harmed, who I hurt, and I couldn't forgive myself for 
this man who was such an amazing guy and I've hurt him so badly. Thank you, Lord. His, he had a heart to forgive me, but it did help a lot to taking that extra step of the things that I've done to hurt other people, not just myself, because typically that's where that forgiveness comes from because we've done something to hurt someone so horribly. Yeah, and as you were talking, I was actually thinking about how did I actually forgive myself? And, and I had to, I had to understand forgiveness. I, I, until I understood forgiveness, I, I don't think I could have. So it's not an emotion, mm -hmm. but, and it does involve stopping, do, stopping the things that are, are causing the guilt and the shame and the, the bad things, you know, whatever bad in air quotes, but I think also, you know, Jesus is pretty clear that we love the Lord God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. And, and you are your closest neighbor. I am my closest neighbor. So we can't, we can't not forgive ourselves any more than we can someone else. And in fact, because it's not an emotion, you just do it. You just do it. Anytime you feel that accusation come up, that's from the enemy. That is never from God. God never, never reminds you of your sin. If you have turned away from it, if you have repented, which is what the word repent means, it just means to do a 180, to just turn away from it. If you have turned away from your sin, you've been to confession. Anytime that you're reminded of it, that is simply an attack of the enemy. God never does that. So when that happens, then what you say is, I reject that accusation in the name of Jesus Christ. And so you deal with the shame knowing, or I did, I dealt with the shame knowing that it was a lie. It's a lie of the enemy to keep me trapped in this self-condemnation and this self-loathing and this self-hatred. Because when, here's the thing, when you don't forgive yourself, you cannot forgive someone else. If you look at Matthew 18, you see that that, that, um, unforgiving servant was forgiven this enormous debt and he turns right around and he tries to strangle someone who owes him a very small debt. Why does he do that? Because he cannot forgive himself. He cannot receive the forgiveness that he was given. And so when we don't forgive ourselves, it's because we have not received the forgiveness that God has given us. And that is simply a matter of doing it. It's not an emotion. It's not saying things are, are, <coughs> fine or that you did the right thing or, or anything like that. It's simply releasing yourself from the debt. You're not better than God. And I remember I actually had somebody say that to me. Oh, so now you're, you're greater than God. <laughs> I was like, well, no, not if you put it that way. Right? <laughs> right. So I think for me, I mean, listen to some of your story, which brings, brings that memory back. I, I just, um, I just had to do it. I just had to. And it made it easier to forgive other people as well, I think, um, because I under I could see myself how my sin came out of my woundedness. And when I learned better, I at least tried to do better, even if I wasn't good at it. I was trying. And so that made me a lot more patient with other people. And it helped with the self-knowledge as, as well. But ultimately, it's just a matter of doing it. It's, it's a, an obedience or a disobedience. It's not a matter of emotion or shame or guilt or any of that, because all of that is an attack of the enemy. And if we simply reject those attacks of the enemy and, and see how often we are attacked in that, mm -hmm. the constant reminder of the sin, <clears throat> the constant reminder of, of the fault of, you know, all of the the memories of it, you know, he likes to bring back the, the flashes of memory and, and the guilt and all that. Every bit of that is from the enemy. Absolutely do not entertain that. And on top of that, it is an act of the will. So just know that emotions will follow it. You will love yourself again. You will be kind and patient to yourself again, and you will fall again. I mean, we're not perfect. We may not be falling into mortal sin, um, you may be just fighting the vices and, and anger and resentment and, and anxiety and fear and living too much in the past or the future. And that's kind of the journey. It's a, it's a process that we have to go through. Every one of us has a little bit of a different process, but the more that you give yourself to God in terms of prayer and time 
and your heart really to invite him in, in a lot of cases to say, Jesus, please forgive for me. That was the moment that I came to that kind of epiphany. I was in adoration and I was like, I cannot forgive on my own. I still have these feelings at this time in my journey. I didn't disconnect the feeling with the actual forgiveness, the act of the will that I wanted, but then everything followed. I started to let go of it and be okay with it and know that, like you said, I'm just as broken as every single person that's watching this. We all have past stuff in our lives, current stuff in our lives. And the more that we let God into that mess, into that hurt, into that pain, he is going to heal it in a way that we will, I mean, honestly, just love and respect ourselves in a different way. And we'll live life and follow God's precepts and commandments lovingly and joyfully instead of, oh man, I can't do this. I can't do that. And we will again, realize that he told us the keys to happiness and joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. So it's, it's, um, it, I'd, I'd invite you all to ask some questions about how or what you I guys are struggling with. <laughs> um, I actually, one of the things that, um, that I do even now, when I, when I do something, I, I recently messed up pretty big <laughs> and it was unintentional, but it was, we have no questions. Come on. Pete. Way. So, and in another person in ministry and I felt terrible and it was my fault. I mean, it, it just was. And I, aside from the fact that it was, I was embarrassed <laughs> but also that I was at fault. Um, I did my best to confront it and own it face to face with the party that I injured. And then, you know, you get into all of that rat's nest of thinking, you know, I should have said this and I should have done that and I need to do this. And then you're, you're like obsessing. If you let yourself, you start obsessing over what do I need to do now? And what about damage control and, you know, all that stuff. How do I, and, and my biggest concern was how do I truly fix this for the other person? How do I, you know, if, if I have wounded them, can I, as far as I can, how do I fix that for them? And I mean, you, you can only do what you can do. I followed what the Holy Spirit led me to do. And, and we reconciled. I mean, truly we did, but you know, you get in that rat's nest and it's hard to stop it. And I was, I was doing that for about two days. And, and I started to recognize that it was becoming a pattern. I was thinking about it way too much. They had forgiven me. They, they, verbally forgave me I verbally asked please forgive me for this and I outlined what it was I mean you know in a sentence or, or so and and so they forgave me but I couldn't stop thinking about it for a couple of days and it bugged me and I when I recognized that I was in that pattern I started pushing back on the lie because the truth was God forgave me I didn't even mean to do it they forgave me because I, I admitted that I did it and I was sorry I did it. So why am, you know, why am I wrapped up in all that? So I stopped the, the obsessive thinking, first of all, but then another thing that helps me is to visualize laying it either at the foot of the cross or handing it over to our lady, just giving it to her. I visualize in my mind that I am handing it to her and I ask her, blessed mother, I do not want to think about this anymore. I am giving it to you. I, please take the emotion and the thoughts and all of it. And I leave it with her. Now in five minutes, I start thinking about it again. And that next five minutes, I go right back to her and I give it back to her again. I, Blessed mother, I don't want to think about this. I've already given it to you. Please take away the emotion too. Because it's the emotion that keeps you thinking about it, right? And after two or three times of that, inevitably, it just, it's gone. If I can distract myself also, because Philippians 4 tells us to think on what is good and true and lovely, think on those things and, and what's, what you're grateful for, the good, beautiful, noble things. And if I can distract myself after giving it to her, 
<laughs> and do something else and think about something else and get busy on something else, inevitably she takes it completely away every time. So I add that visualization to it just to help me like do something active besides seeking forgiveness either for from God or for the from the other person and it helps me forgive myself because I know I've already been forgiven and I just the reason I'm, I'm not forgiven myself is because I can't stop thinking about it and I can't stop I can't stop obsessing over it so it's our thoughts and our emotions I think that if we could get a handle on that a little bit earlier it would probably help us with this whole idea of forgiving ourselves I think a lot of times we we have but it keeps coming back to our memory. And then we start thinking about it. Then we emote over it. And the more we emote over it, the more we think about it. And then, you know, we're stuck in that cycle. So that visualization helps me. All right. Thanks, Donnie. We do have a question in the, in the chat. How do you develop new identity in Christ rather than limit how we define ourselves by our past sins? Well, I just spent five minutes. So Kendra, you want to start with that? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Clearly the hairy legged one doesn't want me to be on this because my entire internet went out and I was plugged oh. in hardwired. I wasn't Wi-Fi, So I'm on data right now because wow. no one's going to stop us from helping everybody <laughs> and love themselves. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'll say Anne-Marie. Sorry. What was the question again? Sir, it's in the chat. How do you develop a new identity in Christ rather than limit how we define ourselves by our past sins? Oh, gosh, because of the love of Christ. And I don't see chat on my phone. So just letting you know, I probably won't see the actual questions. So thanks for reading that. And yeah, that is what it's all about. Our new identity in Jesus. He loves us. We are his chosen ones. We're here for such a time as this. He let us go through these things. Why? So that we can share our witness. So we can be his hands and feet and his vocal cords here on earth. We can share the love that we've all been seeking in him. I know that he loves me. I will never forget my confession after being gone from 26 years. I knew God existed in the sacrament of reconciliation. And so to... I don't look at my past anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm so blessed. He has given me this beautiful gift of detachment where I can just share all of my past with people so that they know that they're not alone. They're, I'm, I kind of put myself out there in a way that might be a little bit overboard and some people might not be comfortable talking about their, their past, but I do it because of all of the beautiful things that God has done to help me get over my past, get over my pride, get over myself, get out of the sticking way, <laughs> let him do what he's supposed to do, which is to transform us. Humble. We can't put ourselves, I love you all so much, don't try to forgive yourself or forgive others on your own. It's long, it's hard. Oh, it's months and months. And then all of a sudden you're going to realize that, wait a minute, if I could do it with Jesus, if Jesus can change my life and I can be this new spirit. Let's think about it is every single day, every single day, we have to give, give ourselves to Jesus. Every single day, he can renew our spirit. Every single day, he can help us with the battles. But we have to pay attention. My gosh, how many times do you blow through your day and you haven't talked to God at all? Haven't seen him in, in anything around you, in what you read, what you hear, what you experience, people in your path. And if we only were like a little bit more attentive to evil that's attacking us, like you know, Sonia said so many times, cast that, when in doubt, cast it out. If, if an emotion comes over you, get it gone because it's usually Satan. Yes, we can also put those thoughts into our own heads, but forgiving, forgetting your past and knowing that I am no longer that person, there's freedom in that, and you want to share that. And that's what kind of, that's what my whole, that's what my whole deal is about, deepening your relationship with God so that he can give you these beautiful graces and blessings in your life and detach from the world so you can go speak about him and the amazing things he's done in your life. 
And I would add to that. I love that that you mentioned the sacraments because those are the canons of the church. And I mean, like canons with cannonballs. (laughs) They're the big guns. (laughs) And so the sacraments are a huge piece. The other piece, though, the one table of the Lord, the catechism says, is the scriptures. And the the scriptures are living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. They divide the heart and the soul and the mind and the strength, and they accomplish the thing that God has sent them for. So the answer to developing a new identity in Christ, rather than limiting how we define ourselves by our past sins, is marinating in what the scriptures say about who you are in Christ. And that's why I added that your identity in Christ to that document that I offered as a download for you so that you could read that and know, look it up with your own eyeballs and see what God's word says about you and Mm -hmm. remind yourself because that's the truth. God does not lie and he cannot lie, the Bible says. And so what he says is true about who you are. And like Kendra pointed out, our emotions follow afterward. So you're not going to feel like what it says necessarily. And you're not even going to feel forgiven or forget or feel the forgiveness with which you forgive yourself, but it doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It doesn't mean you haven't done it. So it's not about the feelings. It is about scripture. It is about the sacraments, that one table of the Lord. We have to have both of those. We have to have the sacraments. We have to have the scriptures because the scriptures teach us who we are in Christ. Another a great place to start is the book of Romans. Read mm. the book of Romans and just marinate in it, marinate <laughs> in what it says about you and who you are in Christ and where you stand. There is now no condemnation in Christ, period. There is Amen. no condemnation in Christ. So if you can't forgive yourself, then you're condemning yourself. And if you're condemning, here's the other thing. I didn't even point this out. I can't believe I didn't even mention this. In Matthew 18, Jesus says that unforgiveness opens the door to demonic torture. Mm. Unforgiveness is demonic torture. He says that he throws, the master throws the unforgiving servant into prison and gives him over to the torturers. Who are the torturers? The demons unforgiveness opens you up to demonic torture. So just do it. <laughs> Don't <laughs> stop thinking about it. Stop I want to say about it. I want to say like one thing, Sonia, I'm just jumping in because I love this book. It's, um, it's a yes. deliverance prayer for the laity. It's by census, census, uh, traditionist press, right? There you go, girl. <laughs> Let's fight the real fight people, because it's not the physical fight it's the spiritual that was in the readings fight. today yes we not fight our struggle is not with flesh and blood it's with principalities mm-hmm. and powers can and i ask this prayer you pray in both of those for both of you what are your favorite right. prayers my favorite prayer is on page 85 the healing prayer ah Okay. I go back to the oppression prayer a lot. Um, and it's, they have one for people who are consecrated to Jesus through Mary or, um, not. And there's also a consecration prayer that's on 43 ish, but I love going back to the back of the book to look at all of the evil spirits. There's 11 pages of ways that Satan attacks us and all those evils. And half the time, we don't even realize that we're being attacked. That's why, I mean, my, my catchphrase is like, when in doubt, cast it out. I mean, why not cast out those spirits, even if it's you that's your own worst enemy in that moment? I mean, I don't know. It just deliverance is so key. And you're right. We have to pay attention to when we have those emotions that aren't of God. We know the fruits of the spirit. And, you know, Sonia, I think one of the things that you mentioned with scripture is so key. I didn't, I hadn't touched a Bible in like 42 years. I don't even know what the Bible's about. I had no, no understanding about the old Testament versus the new Testament. So if there's any people out there who are like, I don't really know the Bible. Well, 
learn it because the more you read the word, the more the word reads you and you will understand it. And pretty soon you'll be meditating on it in Christian mental prayer versus watching people give you exam or the explanation of the Bible, of the gospel or the readings or whatever is going on in what you're confused about, because I didn't know what I didn't know, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't go forward and take that step toward God to learn his word, because I'm telling you, it's amazing when you read it, it's alive. It's truly alive. And you will read one thing one day and one, one thing, another year from now, and it will be different for you. It's amazing. Amen. Nothing transforms <laughs> like the word of God. Oh, and so many people think it's so hard to understand. And it's a bunch of these and thousand and those, and, but it is, it's beautiful. And then you have hope in God's promise. You know, it's like, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not that oncoming train, that hope in God, it's heaven, that light at the end of the tunnel that all these people have these near-death experiences experience, that is the hope that Jesus gives us and the hope that God gives us, and we need to know that hope so we can continue to grab onto it, because sometimes we really stink at hope. We really don't do hope well. Well, I think that's probably why it's called a theological virtue, because we got to have grace to be able to do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Especially now, especially now. And the truth is, you know, we are under Christians, people, the whole world is under the probably the most severe attack right now as, than, than we've ever experienced as humanity, I, I believe. Um, John Paul II had, he had said that there, the times are, are more evil now than they've ever been. That was back when, when he was alive, but he also said that there will be greater saints made now than have ever lived before. And if that's true, I mean, you think about, you think about John Paul II himself, Therese of Lisieux, all of those that we love and who have shepherded, shepherded us and helped us through our, our Catholic lives mm -hmm. and better than better, not better as in like identity better, but, but bigger saints, more graces, more holiness than, than any who have ever lived before. I think that's absolutely miraculous and, and exciting even. So the key is our healing because our healing, that's purgatory. We're just doing it now. We're supposed right. to do it now. We're not supposed to do it later. But in case we haven't finished the process and, and haven't allowed God to finish the process, then, then he finishes up it for us. But if it's true that there are more graces, and, and Paul says so too in the book of Romans, where sin abounds, grace super abounds. So yes, the times are evil. And yes, we're all under attack more so than probably we've ever been in our lives before. That means our relationships are under attack, our everything, our mental health, everything. But, but yep. it doesn't change the fact that there are super abundant graces available as well. And I believe in my one-on-one -on -one work, what I am seeing is that the grace of God is so powerful right now that we almost always get what we ask for <laughs> and pretty quickly. I mean, God is moving so powerfully and so quickly right now because he knows that we're in dire straits. So I say that because that's thinking about, Kendra, what you said about hope. There's always hope. There always is. But you got to be in the word of God on a daily basis or you're not going to have it. You're not going to have hope because it's a hopeless, it's hopeless out there. It's just hopeless. <laughs> The only place there's hope is, is in Jesus. Yes. <laughs> we got to have Jesus on the table, the one table, the sacrament and the scriptures. That's the only way to have hope right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. And for those of you who are like, well, how do I get started? How do I know? I mean, a lot of people don't even know how to pray. They don't know how to build that relationship with God or they're so like distressed because they can't keep their mind quiet or they're distracted. And look, I'm just going to tell you. And I'm not going to tell you myself, I'm going to tell you from St. Augustine, for example, you will not be saved if you don't pray. And prayer is like the, the channel of grace. 
we need to know God. We don't want to be like, Lord, Lord, let me in, let me in. And him looking at us saying, yeah, you know what? I don't know you. I never talked to you. You never spent time with me. You never learned my voice. You never gave me your heart. And, you know, you're, you didn't kick your pride to the curb. You didn't invite me in to the mess. You did it all by yourself. Like, that's not how, how it works. And I don't want to be looking at God saying that I decided it was too difficult to learn how to pray. And I know I have resources. Sonia has resources. There are resources everywhere. And you should all be excited about it because who doesn't want to know God's voice in their life? Who doesn't want to know, oh, that's him speaking or that's evil speaking or that's me speaking. And today we need God to lead us to truth about our own identity, about our mission as people that are supposed to be saints, we're called to sainthood. But if we don't pray, and we don't do like mental prayer. This is the thing that helps us Christian mental prayer. I'm not talking about that new age stuff, you know, 15 minutes at a minimum every day. And St. Teresa of Avila says that if we do that, that Satan knows that he's lost our soul. I mean, come on, what's 15, 20 minutes every day. But I'm going to tell you, the minute you decide to do it, you're going to hang up from this thing or be all excited to get closer to God and Satan will come into play. You'll say, I'm going to wake up 30 minutes early tomorrow and I'm going to pray. And guess what? The alarm goes off. All of a sudden you're saying, oh, it's too cold. I slept really bad last night. I didn't get any refreshment. I'll pray later. How about that one? That one always works. <laughs> so we have to armor ourselves with God, the word the sacraments, man, we've been given the best gift in this church. Why we don't re um, frequent the Eucharist and mass. Why we don't go visit Jesus. Like I I've said before, like you can't sit in front of the sun S O N I'm sorry, S U N outside and not have it impact you. You're going to get burned or you're going to get tan or you're really fair. You know, you might get fried, <laughs> But you can't be in front of God for an hour and not have it impact or the sun. I'm confusing these. The sun in the sky. Same with the sun. As we feel you, Kendra. We got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm like, wait a minute. I'm screwing it all up. He will change you. And we have to be filled with courage and truth because we, again, are his voice here. And look, we're fighting the fight. It's evil everywhere. You've got it in your family. We don't have to be big and bold and bodacious like being out there. We just have to be influential in our circle of people that God put in our life. And it starts with us. So no matter what, even if you're not forgiving yourself or you don't have a prayer life or you're you know, scared to speak out, it all starts with us reaching to God in a humble way to say, I don't have this figured out. You've got to help me. Yeah, I, I heard somebody on the, on my community this week said something that I don't think I'll ever forget. And I, I'm going to use this from this day forward and I'm going to share it with you. She said, I no longer want to use God as my airbag. I want him to drive the car. <laughs> ah, I love like, it. Oh my gosh, that was the best metaphor. We do. Ooh. We use him for an airbag. And you're so right. Every Every church father, every saint, every, everybody all say the same thing. You must pray every day. There's no way you're going to forgive yourself. There's no way you're going to forgive anyone else. If you, if you're not in prayer every day, there's no way. And the scriptures are a huge piece of that because yeah. they are the one table of the Lord. So one of the um, methods that I teach and use Every single day is called love the word. I got it from our lady from the, um, Annunciate the joyful mysteries of the rosary out of the annunciation L O V E. You listen to the word of God in the readings every day, do it for 40 days. 40 is the number of gestation in the scriptures. It's the way to start a new habit. Start every day and read the gospel. If you don't have time to read the morning and the mass and the evening readings, then just read the gospel, but do it every single day for 40 days. Takes five minutes. Nobody here can say they don't have five minutes every morning. Nobody. You listen to the word of God. L is listen. You sit down with that word of God, the readings of the church that you can get for 
free on the USCCB website, universalist.com, uh, Laudate app, the Hallow app, all of those are for free. You read those readings and you're listening. You're not saying stuff. Mary shows us that prayer begins with listening, not saying stuff. She's listening. L is listen, O is observe. She observes her relationships and circumstances and she knows how to interpret her relationships and circumstances, that word of God that she receives through the angel, she knows how that applies to her relationships and her circumstances. She goes straight away to serve Elizabeth. Then V is verbalize. She verbalizes what she believes God is saying to her through the Magnificat in Luke chapter one. And then E, she entrusts it all back to him. May it be done to me according to your word. Listen, observe, verbalize, and trust. L-O-V-E. Do that every single day with the readings of the day, every day in the church for 40 days, and you will be transformed. You will. God will show up, and he will do a work in you, and he will begin that transformation. He will begin. He will, he will make you feel his love and his presence he will show up he cannot resist mm -hmm. that kind of faith 40 days every day all right lord here i am i'm listening i'm listening what do you want to say to me through the readings of the church today and see what happens in 40 days yeah it's so when i um 40 days is amazing. My prayer program, video prayer program is 40 days. And I walk with you. It's kind of like wrapping in the, the whole Catholic church and how we can leverage that as well. But bottom line is it's a daily surrender. And I remember when I was trying to pray, I wasn't doing it consistently. So, you know, one day I'd be on, two days I'd be off, one day I'd be on, three days I'd be gone. And so God, <laughs> God at this moment in the gospel, and I never really paid attention to this word ever. And I'm telling you, Sonia, pick up your cross daily, Jesus says, uh -huh. and follow me. And the word daily slapped me in the face. And I <laughs> sat with that one word for like an hour. Okay, God, I've got to do this daily. Because think about it. Every day is different. It's a beautiful gift, but not every day is going to be the same. Just because, you had a, <laughs> it, right? just, because you, just because you had a really bad day yesterday, you might have a phenomenal day today. Just because you had a really bad day in prayer the other day doesn't mean you're not going to be filled with consolations and those little candies from God. I mean, that's why we got to keep going back to him. And too often we get prideful. And boy, if you guys aren't taking pride to confession and reconciliation every single time, you, you should. Because there's not a soul in hell that has an ounce of humility and there's not a soul in heaven that has an ounce of pride. So the sooner that we can figure out, we can't do this on our own, the better off we're going to be. Ah, at least that's what I came to learn. That's a great point. I, I'll have to remember that too. So there's not a soul in heaven with an ounce of pride and not a soul in hell with an ounce of humility. That's right. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, I steal everything from here. Please pay, like, just like you did. We all are learning. So just know that, this is why we do these podcasts. This is why we share this stuff. This is why we're not all we're not all knowing. We don't know everything. That's why we're supposed to learn like a child. As long as we're okay learning, and I'll be I'll be honest with you. Before God found me, I you would have to pay me to go back to school to learn. You know, I was just all about the culture, pop culture, just get by, skate by, do what I can. Even in my job, you know, as an executive in corporate America, I was just doing what I could to keep it. But then with God, it's a different, it's a different game. He's, he's challenging us to, to live the two greatest commandments, but you've got to keep him first and center and pray and hear his voice and be able to discern that comes with time and it comes with persistence. And when we keep persisting, he will keep pulling us nearer to him. It's amazing how that happens. We can't ask God to guide our feet if we won't move them. I mean, come on. So take that step to do something to get yourself closer to God. Now, what did you grab there, Sonia? I just saw you grab something. You got I got little... my Bible because it made me think of something out of James. Um, if any of you lacks wisdom, which is perspective, God's perspective, if we lack God's perspective, when we look around us and we go, why, 
you know, people say, don't ask God why I say, I have never asked God why that he didn't give me something. So ask, he says, <laughs> if any of you lacks wisdom, if you lack his perspective, ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. But then he says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who mm -hmm. doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord because he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. That double-mindedness is what you were talking about, Kendra. It's that foot in one side and, and in the other foot in the other side. Until we are single-minded and single-focused on God, all in. Until yep. that happens, very little will change because mm -hmm. you're double-minded. Your prayers can't be answered because you're, you're double-minded. You're not focused. You don't know what God is after. You don't know what he's doing because you don't listen and, and you, your will is not anywhere near his. That single hearted focus is just, he comes first. What he wants come, comes first. What he says comes first. He comes first. That's purity. That's what purity means in the scriptures. It's, it's not a matter of cleanliness. We think of purity a lot of times as being clean, especially sexually, but actually mm -hmm. the word purity in the scriptures means single mindedness, single heartedness. So, awesome. so when we're listening and we're wondering, what is, what is God saying here? How am I going to know? Well, the first step is just what Kendra pointed out. We absolutely have to be single-hearted and single-minded because otherwise we are off in all kinds of different directions, uh, driven and tossed by the wind. <laughs> yep. And we have to have trust and faith. I mean, I, that's so, so here's the deal. Uh, we can want what we want. We know we pray for things that we think we want and it may be the best for us. We might even have intentions for others like, oh, please, Lord, please bring this person back to church and bring them back to the sacraments and all that kind of stuff. But as long as we end our prayer with only your will be done, God, then we have taken our pride out of it. We've given a petition up to him in our desires, but yet we give it to him to do with it what he will. If we let it go, then we can still keep praying for what we want to pray, but we say, hey, Lord, you, you got a much better plan than we do. So we're giving it up to you and your will be done. And I think that's a, there's freedom in still petitioning, but then allowing God to do what God does best, which is the great things in our lives. And, and sometimes we want what we want when we want it. And God's timing is perfect and God's ways we won't understand. So, you know, Lord, I believe, help my own belief, like keep praying for more faith, more trust. And honestly, just speaking to him all day, even in the moments, especially in the moments when we aren't loving ourselves. Because again, if we don't love ourselves, <laughs> our closest neighbor, I will remember that one from you, my dear. We are our closest neighbor and we can't give what we don't have. So we don't, if we don't have the knowledge of scripture, we can't talk truth in our lives. We can't face truth in our own lives because I don't know about you, but I've creatively talked myself in and out of sin many times, logically. <laughs> you know, like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't have God's word and really know it, and it's not, and so like, it's that 18 inches from our head of knowledge and understanding because we've studied and all that. But when he moves it to our heart, that's when everything changes fear of the Lord floods into us. We don't want to disappoint him. We, it's not just about not going to hell, but it takes time and it takes you. I'm talking to every one of us. You have to make the decision. Love is a choice for yourself, for God, for others. And we have to choose to love, even if we don't feel it. <laughs> we have to pray for people, even if we don't feel it. <laughs> we have to pray for ourselves, even if we don't feel it. And God will do the rest. We have to trust that. I do have another question. Okay. Uh, oh, regarding yeah, spiritual direction, um, how important to, how important or needed is spiritual direction in forgiving ourselves and growing in His will? And to add to that, is that something that 
either of or both of you offer is spiritual direction? So I am in spiritual direction and I have recently, it's when I first came to the church, that was a new thing for me. I'm, I'm a convert of 16 years and just the, the words spiritual direction. I was like, Oh my gosh, where's this been all my life? If I had had somebody who, who could help me, I would have saved 20 something years wandering around in this hell hole, you know? <laughs> so I was, I was very upset that we didn't have anything like that. So, but recently um, they're hard to find. A good one is hard to find, but there are more of them now than ever have been. So look for one. Yes, they are invaluable in every way. And recently as of like March of this year, um, I have, I have, well, I don't want to go into a long story. So I have one and she is fabulous. And I just met with her this week and I, left her zoom her presence on zoom thinking oh my gosh if this is how people feel when they leave me then I never want to give up what I'm doing because oh. I, I don't call it spiritual direction because I'm not a spiritual director in the Ignatian sense but I do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations over a period of time I also have a master class that that combines all of my books and all of that spiritual direction in one place but I have found a good spiritual director to be one of the best gifts of the Catholic church. And so you have to, you have to, it's like dating, you know, you have to try a bunch of them out and, and don't did. feel bad if you have to toss them to the curb because they're not working. I mean, they know that mm -hmm. they know that and they're not offended. If it's not working, then go find another one. But if you find one and you click, it is so good for your spiritual life because they see from the outside. They don't, we, like Kendra said, we lie to ourselves and we justify all kinds of stuff that we're doing. And a good spiritual direct, director will help you cut through that BS. And yes, <laughs> so Anne Marie, she just posted the Avila Institute. They, they, they are backlogged like crazy. Everybody is, but still try, keep trying and go to the Avila Institute that's the really only place I know that just has like a number. They're constantly training spiritual directors. So they have a, a supply kind of going. So keep, <laughs> keep looking. So yes, I'd say absolutely. Sorry. I didn't mean to talk so long. No, no, no. no, 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 no. To to that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I remember talking with, um, Chris Stefanik from uh, Real Life Catholic. And he's like, you know, you need a spiritual director. And I'm like, oh, I do? Like, what is that? When I first started my ministry, I had no idea. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go get one. And I'm like, uh, where do you find one? What do I do? And sure enough, God put one in my way in reconciliation. I was actually confessing pride because people were saying, oh, you're such a great speaker, blah, blah, blah. And I felt all full of myself. And I'm like, this is supposed to be about God. And so sure enough, I share with this with him and he goes, I can help. And I'm like, you can. He's like, yeah, I'm a spiritual director trained in Ignatian spirituality. And he was fantastic. I just lost him. I just lost him. This, he just left to go to California. And so I'm in the market for one myself. I also offer faith coaching because I found back in COVID, people were really needing one to one help. I mean, we had these virtual conferences that were happening, but the, the one on one connection and true like love that comes out of helping someone seek God, because it's not me. I'm just moving them to prayer. I'm moving them to Jesus. It's I, you know, I look at Mary and I constantly pray throughout it all. I'm not, I, you know, there's no certification per se, but in the end, it's all about taking those steps. So I just use my, myself and other people and other programs. It doesn't have to be me. All I just want you all to do is find someone. You can even have a really close spiritual companion, one that you can be the most honest with. Because a lot of the time we have this facade and we don't want to really share what's going on because of the judgment of others. So let's pray for detachment from the world and the judgment of the culture and all these people and help ourselves be a little more vulnerable because when we open our heart then god will come into that mess and he will put people in our way that can help so by all means if you want to chat 
me and Sonia are available. Go to our website, reach out because, you know, honestly, we're not supposed to walk this journey alone here on earth. Yes, we're Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the way, but we need human community. Church means community. We need that. And we kind of suffered through it over the last few years. And I think people are just falling into not getting back out and seeing and being with people. Oh, and by the way, when you're out and about, go to a new event. Go to Sonia. I'm going to see you up in uh, November 5th at mm-hmm. Women in Christ in uh, the Milwaukee-ish area, South Bend, Wisconsin, I think it is. Because we all need our spirits to be reignited. And guess what? You might meet your spiritual bestie at one of these things, and they probably won't look like you. The first people that I met that helped me on my journey were like in their 70s, and I adore them. So just keep your eyes open and your heart open to all the people that will come into your path. It'll be amazing. That is so true. My very best friend is a, a, a spiritual director through Avila Institute. She's full, but but it helps just having her friendship because like you said, it just helps to have somebody that you can you can just be honest with, you know, mm-hmm. and and who will be honest with you and call your BS, you know, and, and we all need that. Yes. I have another question in the chat about boundaries. How do we set healthy boundaries and how can we best communicate them? Oh dear, we have three minutes. Okay, so boundaries are a matter of charity. They're a matter of charity. No one is allowed to sin against us or abuse us. And we are not allowed to sin against someone else and abuse them. So anytime we've crossed that boundary or someone else has crossed that boundary, we need to prevent that. We can't allow other people to sin against us or those that we're responsible for, we can't. So what that means is gonna be different in every situation and every person, but boundaries are of the Lord. Look at the 10 commandments. <laughs> yeah, look at the 10 commandments. And oh, by the way, we were talking about usccb.org, go out there or actually they changed something on their website. So just search in your search engine, usccb, and then examination of conscience. And you could read the Ten Commandments examination. They have one for married people. They have one for single people. They have one for kids. Your whole reconciliation will be different after you read this because you'll be like, oh my gosh, I, I, I got to go in. You might get a pen and a piece of paper and start writing because it really does um, rock your conscience a little bit. That's what that's supposed to do. And also help you change so that you can continue to be loving but also not a doormat. I mean, we're supposed to speak truth with love and that means respect, but that also means you respect those other souls that you're trying to stick up for or or protect like your kids and people in your family, but also you want to respect Jesus. So let's get the word out. Let's share what he's done in our lives. I mean, I know this isn't really on the boundary side, but that's kind of what it is, is we have to love ourselves our neighbors, but speak the truth with love. And we can only do that if God puts the knowledge and the understanding and moves it into our heart where it actually becomes God's wisdom. It's not us. He puts it there and it, and then we get convicted and then we have to go talk about it. Like you got emotional, Sonia, talking about how amazing it is. And I don't know. We just all need to share what God's done in our life. And this world would be so different. I was going to say too, a good chapter out of the scriptures to look at boundaries is Matthew 18. Amen. You are the Bible chick. <laughs> See, I don't know the chapter verses. And it's funny because I had them on my computer, but i now have my phone in front of my face and I can't like look or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used I mean, to get I aggravated know. at people. And when I was speaking, I was like, what are they doing? Looking at their phones. And then I, I discovered they're reading their Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little moment of yeah, humility for them. me there. Yeah. Go look at Matthew 18. Okay. You know, they're at the, oh, that's so great. And so, and for those of you who are, okay. So I wasn't going to pick up the Bible. I know we only have a few more minutes. Go find an audio Bible, Truth and Life audio Bible by a very Catholic guy. It actually has real like actors and actresses. Kristen Bell is one of the voices and there's a ton of different actors. It saved my life. I wouldn't have listened to the Bible. I wouldn't have read the Bible because I'm not a reader. I'm I'm an audible girl. Like I listen to all my stuff on audible and, and everything. So 
that can help you for those who are um, Bible, you know, <laughs> they're just kind of like this, like, no, no, Bible I'm fear. never going to understand it. Yeah, Bible fear. <laughs> Any last questions before we close in prayer? You can type in the chat or raise your hand as we're closing up. All right, Sonia, do you want to close prayer? Close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that you, as you told your servant, Catherine of Siena, that you made us to need one another on purpose. I thank you for every one of these women and their contribution to the world and to the church. I pray that you would wrap them up in your love right now, that you would pour out your love and your mercy and your peace from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, that they would rest in your great hands as in a bed of faith and just be held by you and your power and your love. Lord, I pray that everything that they put their hands to would prosper. I pray that no weapon formed against them would prosper. I pray that you would hedge them in before and behind and lead them and also be their rear guard. I pray that the lies of the enemy would not penetrate, that you would teach them from your word as they pick up this practice of hearing from you in the readings every day. I pray that you would insulate them from the lies of the enemy. I pray that unforgiveness is laid aside today. And that the accuser, St. Michael, that you would fight him back on behalf of every single one of these women here. I pray for their relationships, their work, and their life in you, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our savior and our healer. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us, for leading us. And blessed mother, we thank you for your son and your yes. Teach us to be magnificat with you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Can you flash that black book again? For the laity. Uh, deliverance prayers for the laity. That's on my that's on my list to buy. Thank you. And then just a closing announcement for everyone that signed up for this this whole weekend, starting at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, you will have free access. You'll be re receiving an email with a link to free access for all the talks, all the freebies um, from 6 a.m. Saturday morning till 6 a.m. Monday morning. So be sure to sign up and uh, yeah. I will, I'll see you soon. Have a really good night. Good night. Bye everyone. Love Bye. You all. God bless.